what we're going to do today is we're going to walk around Washington Square and, and look at some of the historic buildings. So let's get ready to get ready as we look at the historic stuff in Washington Square. Washington Square is one of the original planned squares laid out on the city grid by William Penn surveyor Thomas Holm. It's not only a park, it's a burial ground. The city's early African American community and Revolutionary War troops are some of the people buried here. This is the tomb of the unknown Revolutionary War soldier. The remains of the soldier were found in an archaeological dig not far from Washington Square. This is the entrance to Pennsylvania Hospital, the nation's first hospital that was founded by Benjamin Franklin and Dr. Thomas Bond. From 1751 to 1894, you had to knock on these doors to be allowed in by the hospital's gatekeeper. The gatekeeper lived next door to the gate. This wing was the first section of the hospital built. The keystone reads 1755. And check out that Flemish bond. The original cornerstone was laid May 28, 1755. The inscription was written by Ben Franklin. The first two lines read, With George II happily reigning and Philadelphia flourishing. In the center unit of the hospital, there is a medical library and the oldest surgical amphitheater in North America. This cupola is the last remaining piece of the memorial pavilion that was built in 1894. On the 1000 block of Clinton Street, you will find some of the finest ironwork in the country. If you ever make it to the French Quarter in New Orleans, you may have noticed the same type of ironwork. That's because it was made in Pennsylvania. At 260 South 9th Street, this was a home of a king. Joseph Bonaparte was the big brother of Napoleon and for a small amount of time, he was king of Naples and Spain. After the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Joseph got a request from President James Madison to pay him a visit. Bonaparte left where he was staying in New York and began his trek to Washington, D.C. When the former king got to Philadelphia, he received word that President Madison could not see him. Madison was worried that there would be political ramifications if he was seen with Napoleon's brother. Bonaparte, now stranded before the time of Airbnb, got help from Stephen Gerard and was able to live at this house. We are back in Washington Square, and if you walk this way towards 6th Street, you will see the section of Philly known as Publisher Row. This is the Lippincott Building. They used to publish books here. Next to the Lippincott Building, you will see the home of the former mayor of Philadelphia, Richard Dilworth. And next door to the mayor's house, you will find the Athenaeum. It's a museum and a library that was founded in 1814. Inside the museum, you will find a desk made by Michael Bouvier. He was the great-great-grandfather of Jackie O, 
and that desk belonged to Joseph Bonaparte, the former king who we mentioned earlier in this video. Before you stands the Curtis Building, built in the 1890s. Some of the publications that were produced by the Curtis Publishing Company was the Saturday Evening Post, the Ladies' Home Journal, and Jack and Jill. The Curtis Building was owned by Cypress Curtis. In 1910, he had the Dream Garden installed. Mr. Curtis wanted his employees to be able to look at a beautiful work of art before they had to start their work day. 1998, Steve Wynn purchased the Dream Garden. The sale was blocked by local historians and art lovers who raised $3.5 million to keep the art in the city. The Dream Garden is now owned by the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. At 510 Walnut Street, you will find the former Penn Mutual Life Insurance Building. This building's design is a perfect example of how Philadelphia embraces its past and have a building function in today's world. The facade in the front was part of the Pennsylvania Fire Insurance Company. That building was built in 1838. In the 1970s, the new tower was developed by Theo Chandler. He kept the original facade and built the tower around it. Well, that's it. That's my day here in Washington Square Park and its little surrounding area. Who knew so much history was in the, well, honestly, Independence Hall is, is right there. So, you know, obviously, a lot of people know. So, hey, if you like this video, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out my merch. My merch is fire. Well, make sure you hit like and subscribe and ah. Sell with you later. Turtles!